Jeremiah chapter 7. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house. That sound familiar? Here's a temple in Jerusalem. And God tells Jeremiah, Don't go in, but go up to the gate and proclaim there this word. He's not in the temple. He's at the gate. Does that remind you of something about Jesus Christ and the Laodicean church age? Not going in. He's at the gate. Jeremiah is going to be a street preacher. He's not going in the building. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. He's standing outside the temple. Everyone who's going to the temple, he's preaching to them. Maybe that's what we should do in America. Go to some of these churches and religions, and when they're about to enter and when they're about to exit, maybe we should start preaching to them. That'd be something interesting to do. You won't get no money out of it. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. That, that, that locks out of a lot of gods, doesn't it? Of all the gods in the world, the God of Israel, the Lord of hosts. Amend your ways and your doing. Repent. Get right. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Jerusalem. Judah. It's not heaven. It's a piece of property. Trust ye not in lying words. First Chronicles 28.11 I have a note. Saying the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. Are these. There's a note here. Micaiah 3.11 For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings. Not just partially do it. But all the way do it. If ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. No. Uh, no bribes, no, oh, he's an important figure. If ye oppress not the stranger. You see the works here? This is the salvation God is speaking to Jeremiah, to Israel, to Judah. If you do, if you do, if you do, if you do, if you do. Nothing to hear about the blood of Jesus Christ. If you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, which they've been doing, and shed not innocent blood in this place, murdering. They are murdering in Jerusalem. Neither walk after other small g o d s to your hurt. That's America. Check the murder rate in America. Check the gods in the yellow pages. Check the, the strangers. Check the followers. Check the widows. How are they being treated? How about between a neighbor and a, and a man and his neighbor? We got a thing in America, if you're the criminal, you got rights. You're the victim, you have nothing. And then when you do get prosecuted and you do find guilty, you gain even more rights by going to jail. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, Jerusalem, Judah, in the land that I gave to your fathers. Forever and ever. Works, 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 works. And not heaven, but the land. The land that's being fought over. The land that, that the Catholics say is mine. The land that the United Nations say is the Arabians. The land that the Middle Eastern says it's ours. The land that Ishmael says is not theirs, but ours. The land that you find in maps of Middle East, 
that does not even mention Israel, I have been told by missionaries. Ooh, what America maps going to say pretty soon about the land of Israel. Behold, ye trust in lying words. Does that sound familiar? We're going to run into another little thing that's going to come up that's going to speak about what Paul writes. That cannot profit. Our politics are lies. Our selling something to you are lies. Our advertising, our lies. Religion is a lie. I love you, in most cases, are a lie. Television is a lie. 90% of your TV and radio evangelism is a lie. How much of a library of fiction books are a lie. It's amazing. We went to one of the bookstores here at the mall and we were looking up some books for my daughter. And you find in the religious section, the Christianity section, you find title fiction. Fiction and Christianity are two words that should not go together. You mean you can't find enough books to write the truth on people who live for the Lord and done right? But you got to make up stories? Will you steal? Murder? Commit adultery? Swear falsely? Burn incense unto Baal? And walk after other gods whom ye have not known? That's America. Every Saturday and Sunday, incense is being burned to Baal in, in a particular institute that calls himself a church, but they're not really a church, they're an institute. With little cakes to the Queen of Heaven when we get to Jeremiah soon. That's the sins of Israel and Judah. Stealing, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods. Now, whom ye not know, that means those these are the gods of the of the Canaanites. These are the gods of the Assyrianites. These are the gods of nations all around them which they never knew. Now, they may have knew the Egyptian gods. But now they have adopted the gods of the land, which they were supposed to completely uh, get rid of, kill, and destroy. Thou shalt not kill. They didn't. And come and stand before me, God, in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Come to God at his temple, repent, and get right, and put all your sins away. And I will give you the land. Now we're going to read some interesting things now. In this house, is this house, excuse me, Jeremiah's point, here's the temple, is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Now where does that come from? Matthew 21, 13, Mark 11, 17, and Luke 19, 46. Now watch what the Bible said. I wonder what the perverted Bible said. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. When did God see it? In the temple that Jeremiah is pointing to right now? Absolutely not. It gets destroyed. When did God see it? Six hundred years plus later. Yet, yeah, but in 6000 BC, God said, Behold, even I have seen it. That's a prophecy. Of the Lord Jesus Christ walking, not in the, not in the temple that Jeremiah is looking at. 
the temple that Nehemiah builds and Ezra builds, the city of Jerusalem that Jesus walks in. That's where he makes the cord of, of, of rope and starts scattering everybody out, knocking the tables over in Jeremiah. But go ye now unto my place, which is Shiloh, where I set my name at the first. That's where the tabernacle was set when it came in the land. See what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. Well, let's see, the ark went into the Philistine for a while and got Dagon all upset. Caused the death of uh, Eli. Caused the boy to have a, a, a foul, cursed name for his entire life. Ichabod, which means the glory has departed. You know what God's telling him? Get ready, I'm moving out. And when he moved out, he went to the Gentiles. And now, because you have done all these things, Steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense, walk after other gods. You haven't judged the people correctly. You haven't done your neighbor right. You, blah, 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 blah. This is a long list of them. And I spank unto you, rising up early, that's the prophets. He always sends a warning before judgment. And speaking. Isaiah speaks, Jeremiah speaks, but ye heard not. That sound familiar? And I called you, but he answered not. Listen, I give an invitation. Kind of weird on the street. No one comes. Therefore will I do unto this house, the temple, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust. They trust in the temple over God the buildings getting more honor than God and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers as I have done to Shiloh I will cast you out of my sight Babylon as I cast you out over all as as I have cast out all your brethren Israel, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not for this people, Jeremiah. Lift, uh, I'll try it again. Therefore, pray not though for this people, Jeremiah. Neither lift up cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Imagine God telling a prophet, a man of God, saying, I don't want you praying for those people. There are people, and here's, here's a nation, you may be praying for. The guy's like, give it up. I'm done with them. I'm not going to listen. They have rejected me. They are involved in their sins just too much. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? What do they do in the cities of Jer Judah? What do they do in the streets of Jerusalem? You ready? Are you ready? The children gather wood. Little boys and girls. The fathers kindle the fire. Daddy. And the women need their dough. The wives, the mothers. This is a family thing. To make cakes to the queen of heaven 600 years before Mary is even born. How do you get Mary, the Queen of Heaven, 600 years before she's even born, and here she is in Jeremiah, and it's being done in the what? In the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. 
Do you think that's happening today? Aren't there Roman Catholics running around Jerusalem today? Don't they have their 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 churches there? Aren't they giving cakes, little wafers to Mary in Israel? Yes, they are. So you can eat Jesus. We're not done. And pour out drink offerings. There's the host and the wine of the mass. In Jeremiah 7, verse 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. Six hundred or BC six hundred. How can you say that a church is formed after Jesus Christ, the foundation of Jesus Christ, when you find the number one title, the number one worship of their service six hundred years before he even dies on the cross? And pour out drink offers unto other, small g, o, d, s, period, end of chapter. Let's close our Bibles and go on. You mean there's more? You mean the Queen of Heaven has wafers and drink offerings? Kind of mass thing. Drink and food offerings were because gods were likened to humans and have human desires. So why shouldn't a god have bread and drink? So you liken Mary to a god who comes down in a body who needs food and drink. Oh, but we're not done. There's a comma after small g-o-d-s. How does God feel about the mass? How does God feel about the wafer? How does God feel about the queen of heaven? Now, to be a queen, you can be a two- female personality. You can be the wife of a king. Queen Esther was the wife of a king. So this would say on this one that God has a woman whom he has sexual relations with. Because the only way you can be married is by sexual relations. Flesh joining flesh. Oh, oh, wait a minute. God is a spirit. You read what John 6 says about the flesh and the spirit? So this would say God is having a relationship with a human. I think, they, I think there was something like that just before Noah's time. Another thing could be is a queen like Solomon could set his mother on a throne next to his. Whose mother would you think that they would want to have a throne next to God? I wonder who. But let's see how God feels about this. That they may provoke me, that's God, to anger. Your queen of heaven, your mass, your wafers, your drink offerings, God says, makes me angry. 44, 17 to 19, verse 25. Isaiah 57, verses 5 and 6. There it is. Jeremiah 7, verse 18. When you partake of the Mass... When you partake of the Queen of Heaven, God is angry. 
Do they provoke me to anger? Saith the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to confusion? Of their own faces. So it makes God angry and he says it brings confusion. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. Behold my anger. My fury shall be poured out upon this place. Upon man. Upon beast. And upon the trees of the field. And upon the fruit of the ground. And it shall burn. And shall not be quenched. Sounds like hell to me. Why? Having a queen of heaven, having a mass, having little cakes to her, and having drink offerings, and having a whole family take part. <laughs> Thus say the Lord of hosts. Oh, 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 what's that word? Host? That is what the wafer is called in the Roman Catholic Church. I know there's... I don't know how many generations of Roman Catholic Church I come from. Second generation came from Poland, a Roman Catholic country. You just made the host, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And what do we say about that, Lord, when it came to Jehovah Witnesses? That's Jesus, and Jesus is God. There's the host. They make the host. Capital L. Capital O. Capital R. Capital D. And what do they say? It's not a symbolic. It's not an illustration. It actually becomes the body of Jesus Christ. In their own words. In their own books. In their own teachings. They just took out an angered God. They're always good for taking things out. The God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. That came on later, Exodus 20. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. Adam didn't do that. And I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. Abraham did. And I walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that ye may be that it may be well unto you. Well, it's not well with them, because they are not obeying God. But they, but they hearken not, nor inclined thy ear, but walked in the counsels and the imaginations of their evil heart. And went backward, there's that backsliding, and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day. From the Exodus night unto B.C. 600, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. Moses, Aaron, Jeremiah, all of them. Daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their father. See, this queen of heaven was not known among the Israelites in the wilderness. They didn't know her yet. They didn't know Dagon yet. But they soon learn too. Not even sure if they knew Baal in the wilderness. They knew the Egyptian gods. We know that. The golden calf of the Egyptians. Ready? You ready? I think we're in 24. You ready? I think we're in 24. I think we're in Jeremiah 7.24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and imagination of their evil heart, went backward, not forward, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, 
I have even sent unto you all my servants and prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck and did worse than their fathers. Is there a religion where they use the term fathers? And don't listen to what God has to say and has a queen of heaven and a host and dough and drink offerings that anger God. And God has sent Bible preachers to them and has showed them, showed them the, the Bible, showed them the people their Bible, and they have tortured them. They have killed them. A.D. In the, year of our, in the year of our Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. I, I give an invitation. No one comes. I preach to them. No one listens. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation, Israel, Judah, America, that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. God says sodomites are abomination. America says, let them get married. God says, take my word and write upon the post of your house. Teach them to your children. The, the America says, keep them out of the schools and keep them out of the courthouse. The uh, Bible says, pray without ceasing. America tells the kids, don't you pray here. Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. But we got a lot of correction buildings. We've got a lot of people in the correction system. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. You know the honest man today in America, he, he, he's the vile one. Cut off thy hair. Now there were Levitical laws about the hair, old Jerusalem, and cast it away. Jeremiah, uh, uh, I think it's Ezekiel's told, shave his hair, one part will go through the fire, one part will go through being a sword, and a little bit will be left over. Take up a lamentation in high places. Jeremiah is going to write a lamentation. By the way, high places where they're worshiping gods. You know, there's a particular church out there that has buildings with high places with a dumbbell up there. I mean, with a bell up there. Ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling. Always calling their congregation. Ding-dong, ding-dong. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. Now let me, you stay there. Let me go to Exodus real quick. Let me go to Exodus 20 and read something to you. Exodus 20, when the law is given by God's mouth, I'll read you something about these images that show up. God says, Exodus 20, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Does that sound familiar? Out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Sound familiar? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that's in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. By the way, that's removed from the Roman Catholic Ten Commandment list. Number ten is broken into two, so you still get ten. Now watch this, what we just read in Jeremiah. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, Visiting iniquity upon the fathers, upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Fathers, children, generation. You hate God. 
you partake in the mass, if you partake of idolatry, you hate God. I read it to you. I gave you the book, I gave you the chapter, and I gave you the verse. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight. Read verses 1 to 29 again on your own very slowly to find out what the evil was done. Saith the Lord, they have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name the polluted. The queen of heaven has moved into the temple. I'm wondering where she sits. They have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the sun and Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire to Molech. And when you go into the history of that, these are legitimate children by religious people to get rid of the legitimate children by religious people, they would offer them to the god Molech. See, certain fathers can't be fathers because they're supposed to dedicate their life to God. When they become fathers, they weren't supposed to be fathers, so we got to get rid of the children. America has it one step better than verse 31. See, this is post-abortion. America has free abortion. We kill the babies in the womb. We don't wait for them to be born. We take a step up notch of sin. If God says when you burn your children to Tophet in the valley of Hinnom, I hate that. What do you think when you take an unborn child? Which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. God has never, ever thought about you taking your children's life. Never came to God's heart. Verse 31, Jeremiah 7. So what do you think God thinks about abortion? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet, and that till there be no place. They're going to fill that place with grave. They're going to fill it with dead bodies. In other words, you're going to reap what you sow. For every, for every son and every daughter you bury there, you're going to be burying other people. Now remember, when you plant a seed in the ground, you get more than the seed that you planted. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of heaven. Sounds like Armageddon. But this is before Armageddon, yet but a prelude to Armageddon. The fowls of heaven and the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of myrrh. I always thought that meant, oh, look it up, joy and all that. Just, mirth does not look like a joyful word. It looks like, oh, I feel so mirthful today. But it isn't. That's why you use a dictionary. The voice of gladness, the voice of a bridegroom, the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. You know what God's going to take away? He's going to take away all the music, all the joy, all the drinking, all the happiness. He's going to take away all the parties, all the cakes, all the ice cream. He's going to take it all away. You're going to have to a bunch of dead bodies lying all around. Why? Because you sinned against God. 